Hello Biotechnicans, this is Dr. Farhan Zameer from Biotechnica Bangalore. So for today, we would go for a debatable uh, content, a debatable video which talks about the advantages and disadvantages of having a PhD in India and abroad. Let's try to refute. Welcome back. So, as we have already captioned our video as the advantages of uh, having the advantages that is the merit or the demerit of having a PhD in India and abroad. Let's try to see uh, the 10 most important points which will actually create a difference. Point number one, the topic of PhD. Normally in India, what happens is we go to a, a research mentor and then the research mentor has a particular facility and with this particular facility you need to start your research. So what I'm trying to make you understand is you do not have a leverage of trying to put up your idea because for that particular idea whether that facility is available with the researcher or with the mentor is not well defined. So it becomes very very crucial that you are trying to align your ideas, your creativity, your innovation to the existing facility in India. However, in abroad, what happens is when you join as a PhD scholar, you go on to a lab rotations in that particular department or an interdisciplinary department wherein depending on all the facilities and depending on your idea, you can do a part of work in under one mentor and then another part of work with another mentor so that you can still have the leverage of incorporating your ideas, you know, getting your work uh, done with uh, whatever you had planned. But this facility many a times is lacking when we when we talk about an Indian context. Then coming on to the supervisor. Now, uh, getting a research supervisor is very, very crucial. And many a times in India, there's a phobia which has been created. Either it could be a gender biased or it could be an institutional bias or it could be a topological bias or it is a demographic bias, something like this. But however, when we do uh, search for uh, research supervisors or mentors abroad, many a times, you know, because it is of a multi diverse condition, nobody bothers about, uh, you know, from what background you come from, what bother everybody bothers is only the science what you contain. So hence, uh, searching a research supervisor um, in abroad becomes much more easier. However, in India, um, you know, uh, you have various cadres of research supervisors coming from various different kinds of uh, backgrounds. Either your supervisor for, could be from an academia background or from the research background that he would, uh, he or she could be a scientist or he or she could be in an R&D of a particular company. From there, they would be having an ability to guide under uh, an affiliated uh, institute or an affiliated university. So sure, understanding the tempo between the, the student and the supervisor becomes becomes much more you know difficult in terms of an Indian context however uh, uh, you know when you study abroad it becomes much more easier and there are always people to help you out and that I'm not trying to tell you that you know uh, performing or doing a PhD in India would be you know um, uh, very very difficult but on the other way I'm trying to explain you the current scenario uh, uh, in a lot of universities and research centers then the third very important point is in terms of funding and very importantly fellowships. Now in India, uh, getting a fellowship is a bit difficult because there's a huge competition. But however, if you are having a substantial amount of a small background in your dissertation writing, which has been proved using manuscripts or by review articles or book chapters, getting a position abroad as a PhD student becomes much more easier. But however, uh, once uh, you need to go outside, that means to say you need to qualify certain, uh, you know, uh, uh, examinations such as TOEFL or uh, GRE, which will define that you are still able to pursue your studies in English uh, in a foreign country. So uh, certain point of time, all this becomes a bit hectic when you are going abroad. But however, in your mother country, uh, you know, uh, getting a fellowship is much more easier. And government of India now is giving a lot of push 
towards uh, fellowships. Uh, on fellowships, I would like to make a, a, a dedicated video uh, and especially when it comes to women. Uh, so there are dedicated fellowships from Department of Science and Technology, Department of Biotechnology, uh, ICMR that is Indian Council of Medical Research, then ICR, Indian Council of Agricultural Research, all this under Women Empowerment Program, they are trying to push uh, females for pursuing higher research and hence uh, there are a lot of fellowships in India also um, than compared to abroad but however uh, once you go abroad the duration of PhD is somewhere between three to four years however in India for a quality PhD to come out the duration is between uh, three to five years and sometimes it is six years also. Then the living cost. Now since you are into the same country and you know the entire niche of this particular area, so the living cost becomes much more affordable in your mother country. However, when you go abroad, it becomes a bit difficult and again, the, the variation in the currency rates, all this will actually play a very, very crucial role. One important suggestion is if you are not getting a fellowship from any of the government, either from India or abroad, please do not opt for self-financing scheme because this I have seen uh, that many, many a times this is much more taxing to the family and to the individual. So until unless you have a funding, I would never suggest uh, uh, an Indian student to just directly go there and then, you know, start doing the PhD on a self-financial mode until and unless you belong to some aristocratic family. Then the central facility or the core facility. Now uh, in India, uh, now there are a few new new establishments wherein they are creating a central facility but however uh, at the universities abroad you have a huge central facility wherein all the equipments are just being dumped over there and it is re ready for use and there are a lot of technicians who are ready to help you out so uh, there is no issues of ingredients there is no issue of expertise it is not necessary that you need to be an expert to use confocal microscopy because there is a dedicated uh, you know uh, a technician who can actually help you out in performing confocal microscopy and who will guide you throughout the process and also help in analyzing the, the results. However, this facility in now in India, we, it is just blooming. But however, uh, you know, if you are designing or if you are planning for some confocal microscopic experiment, that means to say you need to start from zero to hundred and everything would be on your own and many a times it would be on your own expenses. Then coming on to the thesis writing and publication, many a times uh, when you are when you are uh, uh, st perceiving your studies abroad, there are most of the people who are actually uh, present in the laboratory who are actually helping you in writing your publication who are actually helping in writing your dissertation and theses. So uh, the manuscript writing or the manuscript correction happens with the assistant of the principal investigator if it is a bigger laboratory. However, in the smaller laboratory, the principal investigator or supervisor is many a times responsible for publication. However, in an Indian scenario, um, the quality of publication which goes into uh, could differ and also many a times the affiliation also matters with the publication. So just make sure you know you do a quality work and please do not become a part of predatory journals or non pre reviewed journals because ultimately even if you publish around 1000 articles in a predatory journal which will not be equivalent to one pre-reviewed article. So please refer to good publishers such as Elsevier, Springer, uh, Willey, uh, Taylor and Francis. All these are very good publishers wherein your work could be you know, uh, focused or your work would be projected onto an international platform which can actually gain you much more recognition. Uh, if you are a PhD, then it will actually help you in getting a postdoc. If you are already a postdoc, that will actually get you uh, into a position of tenure track on a non-tenure track. Then coming on to the coursework. Now um, in India, now UGC has made coursework as mandate. So until and unless you have qualified certain examinations, nationalized examinations, you are not being exempted from coursework and hence coursework becomes very, very important. Sure, and other glitches, until and unless you qualify your coursework, you are not eligible for certain other fellowships. So only when you qualify certain um, uh, you know, examinations, especially with your coursework, 
you are qualif you, you are eligible for applying for certain fellowship but uh, for qualifying this particular coursework you might take one year after joining your provisional registration however when you go abroad once you once you have got this fellowship your fellowship would start from day one this is an advantage of you getting a fellowship abroad now coming on to the quality of work Obviously, because of the facility, because of uh, the entire habit and habitat of the research environment, what you have uh, in a particular laboratory that will actually enhance the quality of work when you are trying to work abroad. But however, even in India, government is giving a lot of push in establishing core centers, trust areas wherein new kind of research would have been emerged out with very good impact factor publications. Now, the only problem uh, with the quality of work is many a times, uh, you know, we, we compromise with our research for, uh, for getting fast publications. I urge with you people do not go for a shortcut mode uh, and also make sure you are publishing with high quality impact factors. Then finding a positions. So if you are a PhD student uh, abroad, finding a position abroad for a postdoc becomes much more easier. However, if you have completed a PhD in India and then applying for a postdoc becomes much more difficult. Now, uh, if you apply for around 3000 application, around 300 people will respond. In that 300 people, only 30 people will respond you positively. In that 30 people, there will be only three people who will be ready to hire you. And upon an interview, there will be only one person who is actually liking you to hire. So the, the frequency becomes uh, very, very stringent and hence you know getting a PhD uh, in India and uh, applying for a postdoc abroad becomes difficult however if you are already a PhD in abroad so applying for a postdoc in the same lab or in the neighboring lab becomes much more easier because you already know the niche of uh, the entire area and then your record is clean so you know getting your work visa uh, becomes much more easier. Then coming on to the last point that is exposure. Exposure when you are trying to work abroad becomes much more greater. Uh, many a times, you know, uh, certain technologies are very relevant over there. And when I come back uh, into India, those particular technologies are not being used at all. So example, my experiences, um, 10, 10, 15 years back, I was able to perform microarrays. Uh, especially protein arrays and uh, gene arrays and the moment I came back to India I, I had simply I had no facility of doing this particular microarray. So many a times whatever we study abroad if I plan to come back okay that facility is simply not available. So but however make sure that if you are trying to learn something uh, okay you, you, you actually replicate it and understand it in a much better way so that the same technology can be bought into your home country and could be again uh, enhanced for certain other works so these were the you know uh, the best 10 points which a person has to remember when you have uh, opted for performing your phd or perceiving your phd in india and abroad i wish all the very best from the team biotechnica thank you very much